I sighed Count the seconds Till I Die Hold My hand Smile And tell me That you Care Cause I'm scared Now Now when I stand
and welcome to KBLP. Hey, Tori. Hi, Michelle. Thanks for listening. Um, we're gonna we're doing progressive rock bands this week, seventies, eighties, and nineties. Now, the definition of progressive rock. It's a broad genre of rock music. It developed in the UK and United States throughout the mid to late 60s, actually. It was initially termed progressive pop. The style was an outgrowth of psychedelic bands who abandoned standard pop traditions in favor of instrumental and compositional techniques, more frequently associated with jazz, folk, or classical music. Additional elements that contribute to progressive is... Lyrics were more poetic. Technology was harnessed for new sounds. Music approached the condition of art and the studio rather than the stage and became the focus of musical activity. This involves more listening uh, to music and not dancing. So that is what progressive rock is. Uh, We're going to start backwards tonight. We're going to start with the 90s and work back to the 70s. Save the best for laughs, right? So... The first one for the 90s is called, uh, they're called Echolin. Um, and they're an American progressive rock band. They were based out of eastern uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, and the members of Echolin have cited Genesis, Wilco, Yes, Steely Dan, Jethro Tull, ELO, and the Beatles as influences. Uh, the band's style has varied over the years, they have been, uh, but their influences have been um, consistently reflected in their music. Uh, intricate guitar leads, harmonic structures, influenced by modern classical music and complex vocal passages. They have remained significant aspects of the mu- musical sound of echoing. So here is Eklund for uh, one of the songs, Never the Same. Yeah. 
Okay, up next. That was number 10. Number 9 uh, from the 90s. And if I could spell, that would be better. Good thing I looked at that. Is the... Uh, The group Porcupine Tree. It's a group from the 90s, Porcupine Tree. And Porcupine Tree, uh, early sound, evoked a style of psychedelic rock comparable to that of progressive rock band Pink Floyd. Uh, they signed with K-Scope Records in the late 90s, and the band approached a more mainstream alternative rock sound. By the early 2000s, the band had signed to a major record level, and shifted their sound again, this time in progressive metal direction. Um, during a career spanning more than 20 years, Porcupine Tree earned critical acclaim from critics and fellow musicians and developed a cult following uh, from, uh, and became an influence for new artists. Their work mostly stayed away from mainstream music, being described uh, such as classical rock and pop matters. Uh, and pop matters said they are the most important band you've never heard of. So here is number nine, Porcupine Tree, Radioactive Toy.
<laughs> you definitely know if I do hip hop, um, you, I, I, you don't like that band? I thought they were pretty good. I like, kind of like them. Anyway, yes, definitely when I do hip hop, dear, you will be in on it for sure. Okay, number eight of the 90s um, is Marillion. Uh, they were their recorded studio output since eighty two is composed of eighteen albums, generally regarded in two distinct eras. Uh, uh, the band achieved eight top ten UK albums between eighty three and ninety four. We're doing them in the nineties, but they'll be back in the eighties when we do those, uh, including a number one album in eighty five, misplaced childhood, which we will play in the eighties. Um, and during the period the band were fronted by Fish, they scored 11 top 40 hits on the UK uh, singles chart, and we'll be hearing a couple of those. Uh, Kaylee and Lavender, which reached number two and number five. Kaylee also um, hit the Billboard Hot 100 in the U.S. Um, they're considered uh, like almost neo-progressive rock band. So here's Marillion, The Great Escape. You're drifting away. You've gone too far. I can't help you anymore. Heading for the great escape. Heading for the right. Heading for the permanent holiday. Heading for the winter trip. Heading for the slide Heading for the dignified
Okay, that was <laughs> Marillion. I kind of like them. They have some uh, great songs, actually. So, oh yeah, you'll be in on it, Tori. You'll be in on it. Up next, number seven of the 90s of progressive rock bands is Pain of Salvation. Um, they're a Swedish band. Um, Pain of Salvation sound is characterized by riff-oriented guitar work, a broad vocal range, oscillation between heavy and calm passages, complex vocal harmonies, and the structures of their album, syncopation and polyrhythms. Thus far, every album released by the band has been a concept album. Uh, lyrically, the band tends to address contemporary is issues such as sexuality, war, environment, humanity, and existence. So here is Pain of Salvation, number seven, People Passing By.
Once he was strong and filled with visions, with a life ahead, he said his sins. Then things went wrong. Now his ambitions have turned to smiles, conserved in frames. Still could be strong. Okay, uh, Pain of Salvation isn't too bad, actually. Um, up next is, I'm not even sure I'm pronouncing them right, Queen Search. Queen Search. Um, they're from the U.S., uh, from Washington, actually. They have sold over 20 million albums worldwide, including over 6 million here in the new U.S., so that says something, I guess. Um, the band uh, received worldwide acclaim after the release of their 88 album, Operation Mindcrime. They're a progressive metal band. So it should be interesting to listen to. Um, remember, this music is for listening, not dancing or anything. Um, Operation Mindcrime is often considered one of the greatest heavy metal concept albums of all time. Empire, released in 1990, was also very successful. Um, the band has received three Grammy Award nominations for songs from both albums. In 1998, drummer Rockenfield received an individual Grammy nomination. So here is Cream Switch with anybody listening. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. If I'm not, please correct me.
Okay, that's corrected. Thank you. Queen's right. Okay, that sounded even better. I butchered the hell out of it, didn't I? Okay. <laughs> not bad, though. Not bad. Okay, number five. Okay, this is one I know you've been waiting for. Pink Floyd, of course, is number five in the 90s. Um, what, what can you say about Pink Floyd? Come on, we all know. Um, English rock band, of course. <laughs> um Formed in 65, international acclaim with their progressive and psychedelic music. Distinguished by their use of philosophical lyrics, sonic experimentation, extended compositions, and elaborate live shows. They are one of the most commercially successful and influential groups in music, in popular music history. Uh, Pig Floyd, what can you say? You gotta love them. Uh, progressive rock, art rock, psychedelic rock. So here is Pink Floyd, Shine On You Crazy Diamond.
Okay, moving on. Oh, Pink Floyd is so awesome. They are so awesome. Uh, they're number five in the 90s. Of course, we're going to get back to them um, in the 80s and 70s. Number four up in the 90s of progressive rock bands is Anglegard. Um, they're not bad. I've never listened to them before. I did the research, so um, hope you enjoy them. They're not bad. Not really. Uh, pretty good music on some of it. They're number four. But you got to love some Floyd. Come on. Um, they're a Swedish rock band, of course, Anglegard. Um, they have influence from King Crimson, Genesis, uh, Van de Graaff Generator. They were established in 91 and broke up in 94. They briefly reformed in 2002 and 3, and they've been active since 2009. So they combine vintage analog sounds with a modern classical approach to their compositions and arrangements. To date, they have released three studio albums and three live recordings to great acclaim from the progressive rock community. So here is Anglegard and Jordac. You, you may have uh, noticed um, the gentleman behind uh, the keyboards. It's, I don't know if you recognize him, but it's not Thomas. No. We, we have the honor to play with uh, a member of a band, a fabulous band that's called Gösta Berling Saga. If you never heard them, you should check them up because they're so good. And David Lundberg, he, he plays with them. He, he's a member of that group. And now it's, it's absolutely amazing that he wants to play with us too. So we're so grateful. Thank you.
And that, what do you say? That was, what are you saying? There's only one reason I stay. <laughs> oh, thank you, dear. <laughs> I know, I know. It does get better. Um, actually, I, you have to remember that progressive rock music and stuff is to listen to. And I like the combination of sounds they had in that. I really did. Um, this is just to kick back and chill and listen. You don't get up and do the mamba or the electric slide or whatever. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but anyway, Radiohead is number three of the 90s progressive rock bands. Um, they released their debut single, Creep, in 92, which is one of my favorites anyway. Uh, their popularity and critical standing rose in the UK with the release of their second album, The Benz in 95. Uh, third album, OK Computer, in 97. That propelled them to international fame. Noted for its complex production and themes of modern alienation, it is often acclaimed as a landmark record of the 90s and one of the best albums in popular music. Their next album, Kid A, in 2000, and Amnesiac in 2001, they recorded simultaneously. Uh, they, that marked a dramatic change in style, incorporating, incorporating influences from experimental electronic music, 20th century classical music, and jazz. Uh, Kid A album had divided listeners, but was named the best album of the decade by Rolling Stone. So here is Radiohead with Paranoid Android, number three.
Okay, Dwell, tell me. Why do you listen to pop and hip hop? Anyway, moving on. Number two, simple answer. Makes you happy. But that's good. What's so far? That I said the 80s and 70s are coming up. So that's better music. Trust me. <laughs> um, that's why I started with the 90s. Get them out of the way. Uh, number two is from the 90s, the musical box with musical box. They're a French Canadian. They're actually a tribute band uh, formed in Quebec in 93. They create perform, recreate performances by English rock band Genesis during the 70s. Um, and things like that. So here's the musical box.
Okay, that was number two for the 90s. Okay, wake up. Okay, up next, number one uh, progressive rock band for the 90s is Dream Theater. They're an American progressive metal band formed in 85 under the name Majesty. Um, They subsequently dropped out of their studies to concentrate further on the band, which would ultimately become Dream Theater. Uh, The original three members remained together until 2010. Let me see. Their highest-selling album is the gold-selling Images and Words 92, which reached number 61 on the Billboard 200. Um, Metropolis Part 2, Scenes from Where He Was Ranked number 95 in 2006 issue of Guitar World Magazine's The Greatest 100 Guitar Albums of All Time. It is ranked as the 15 greatest concept album uh, by Classic Rock Magazine. As of 2018, Dream Theater has sold over 12 million records worldwide. And they have had two Grammy Award nominations. So here's the number one progressive rock band of the 90s, Dream Theater with Pull Me Under.
And that does it for the 90s. Cover Wars is up next. I uh, hope you're all listening. Uh, the first set of Cover Wars is going to be um, the song by Elvis Presley. Viva Las Vegas. Typing. So we'll see which cover band. Oh, that made good sense. Hang on, I can't spell. Okay, so up first, Cover Wars. Viva Las Vegas. First up, Bruce Springsteen. There'll be four. And here we go. Bruce Springsteen with Viva Las Vegas.
Let's send this thing off in style now, you ready? It's a song about the next place the germs are gonna play. Darby Crash meets Caesar's Palace. Caesar's Palace meet Darby Crash. Now for the germs. Viva Las Vegas.
Okay, those were the covers for Viva Las Vegas. We had The Killers. We had The Dead Kennedys. We had Bruce Springsteen. He kind of sucked. And we had ZZ Top. You, <laughs> they were good, Michelle. So we have one ZZ Top, one... Uh, oh, I like Dead Kennedys. I thought they were good. So... Uh, Dead Kennedys was good. Yeah, Michelle, good choice. So we have one ZZ Top, one uh, Dead Kennedys, but Bruce Springsteen kind of sucked at it. Okay, we're going to jump a decade and go into the 80s. Uh, we'll probably do half the uh, <laughs> half the 80s, do another cover set, and wrap it up for the night, and I'll do part two. I should just do two nights of this because it keeps coming out that way. Uh, because there's so much music to listen to. So, we're going to start off with World Trade. Uh, this is the 80s, so let me type that in. If I could type. Okay, so number 10 of the 80s is World Trade. Okay, type in, give me a second. There, number 10, we're going to work our way backwards because I think it works better that way. Save the best songs for last. And this is Revolution Song. Okay. They're a U.S. progressive rock band. Of course. Yeah, I'm not a real big uh, Springsteen fan either. There's a few I like too, but he, he didn't do that so well. Um, let's see. Um, their 89 debut was co-produced. A second fo album followed in 95, a Magna Carta Records. Um, the band's sound had similarities to the 80s, yes, and the album included two Chris Squire experiment songs. And he assisted on backing the vocals. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Dick Kennedy's are cool. I like them. Anyway, um, they also recorded a series of tribute albums. Um, a third album was released in 2017 uh, titled Unify. So when it features the original lineup of the bands. Oh, yeah, I do, too. Uh, so here's the number 10 song, uh, Revolution Song by World Trade.
Okay, start the 80s on a good note. Okay, up next is uh, number eight. Oh, that didn't spell right. Uh, the 80s, number nine, Anderson Buford, Wakeman, Howie, Birthright. Say that ten times. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me, sinuses again. But anyway, uh, Anderson Buford, uh, Wakeman Howe. Uh, they were a progressive rock band, active from 88 to 90. Uh, that comprised four past members of the English progressive rock band, Yes. Singer John Anderson left Yes as he felt increasingly... I, he probably have. Um, he was he felt constrained by the commercial and pop oriented direction in the eighties. He began an album with one of the band's lineups from seventies guitarist Steve Howe, keyboardist Rick Macon, Wakeman, and drummer Bill Bill Bru, the Bruford. Um, the group released their solo studio album in June eighty nine. They reached number fourteen in the UK, number thirty in the US. Um, their 8990 World Tour was well received and spawned two live albums. In 1990, tracks for a second studio album were included with songs recorded by Yes to make the 13th Yes album Union in 91. This marked the end of Anderson, Buford, Wakeman, Howe, and the start of the eight member Yes formation until 92. So here it is ABWH and Order of the Universe.
eight or the eighties top uh, progressive rock bands. We have It Bites, and with their song "Old Man and the Angel." Now, It Bites, um, they're an English progressive rock band and pop fusion band. They formed in England in 1982. They're best known for their 80s single, Catching All the Heroes, that gained them a top UK singles chart hit. Um, they're, having, uh, they're described as having a strong art rock tendency. It Bites may also be described as a band is heavily influenced by pop as its progressive rock, of course. This band's musical development can be split into four phases. Um, their bad lad in the windmill phase, various uh, varieties of contem contemporary pop, funk, uh, sophista pop, and queen style glam rock. Then they went with this album, Once Around the World, Produced 70s style progressive rock with 80s contemporary. Um, they produce detailed hard rock songs with the Eat Me in St. Louis one, uh, phase with elements of heavy metal and glam rock. So here is It Bites an Old Man and the Angel.
All right. Uh, busy typing. Up next is number seven. And, of course, we all know this band. They're around forever. Um, and I absolutely love them. Well, I'm deleting that because that didn't turn out right. Okay, so number seven. <laughs> we'll try that again. Pink Floyd, of course. Uh, 80s. Uh, they, uh, they've been around every decade there is. Um, and this is their song, Learning to Fly. We bet we talked about them earlier. So without further ado, here is Pink Floyd and Learning to Fly.
And this band was discussed earlier, Marillion, uh, with Kaylee. Um, so we discussed them earlier. They're very cool. I, I kind of like some of theirs. Um, they're a progressive rock band, of course. And this is from the one we discussed. Um, they bridge the styles between, um, uh, like punk and, um, uh, kind of like contemporary. Um, this is a number one album from 1985, Misplaced Childhood. The song is from that. It's called Kaylee. Uh, they were fronted by Fish. They scored 11 top 40 hits. Uh, these songs, uh, one is Kaylee, one is Lavender, which reached number two and five respectively. And Kaylee was also in the Billboard 100 in the U.S. So here is Marillion's Kaylee.
Yeah, I really like them. The more I listen to them, the more I like them. So, well, that didn't make sense. Okay. Uh, the next one, number five, is from uh, Emerson, Lake, and Powell. Um, they were English progressive rock band. Uh, an offshoot or a variant lineup of Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. They released one studio album in 86. Um, they had planned to reform the group, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, uh, but drummer Carl Palmer was unavailable because he was with Asia. So they came up with uh, Cozy Powell, a longtime friend of the Emersons, to replace him. Um, they always thought it was coincidence. His last name started with a P also. So they were able to keep their original initials. Um, they joke about looking for, uh, you know, a Phil Pollins or Ringo Parr, and Paul agreed to join. Um, before Paul agreed to join, uh, shortly into recording, Emerson's barn studio was destroyed by a runaway tractor, requiring some parts of the album to be recorded. Um, and he jokes about it. They should have called it Emerson Lake and Plow. So this has, uh, this band's self-titled studio album was a return to the familiar ELP style. Long progressive rock suites, mellow ballads, and a classical theme. Uh, Mars is the song we're going to listen to. So, uh, Mars, the bringer of war, a piece previously performed by Lake during his time with King Crimson. So, without further ado, here is Emerson Lake and Powell.
Okay, now it's time for our second. <laughs> I have to agree, law and order, and he's going to investigate. Okay, anyway, second set of cover wars. Helter Skelter by the Beatles. So let's see what they have to bring. Here is Oasis with Helter Skelter.
get to the bottom, I go back to the top of the slide Where I stop and I turn and I go for a ride Ain't no dancer Yeah Hell the dancer Hell the dancer Hell the dancer oh. Will you want you want me to make you I'm coming down Hey, that was Cover Wars with Helter Skelter by the Beatles. Um, Motley Crue was the best, I think. I have to agree with you there. I loved Aerosmith, too, though. They were pretty good. So, I think Motley Crue won this one for Helter Skelter. Okay, we're going to wrap it up for tonight, and we'll continue, uh, I think, Friday evening before Hollywood. We'll do part two. Uh, progressive rock bands. I might as well just do this two nights because, <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> you did. I got it. Okay. Uh, but I think uh, we're just going to, I'm going to start just doing two parts. I might as well because it always ends up that way because there's so much music uh, to go through through the decades. Yes. Yeah. Of these four, definitely crew. Um, so uh, wrap up for tonight, uh, tomorrow night. Join me on Encounters of the Strange Kind for reincarnation. Uh, do you believe in reincarnation? How many lives have you had? Do you know? So join me for that. After that, Lolita's Jam with some hip-hop, uh, some underground music, and new artists. So please stop by and say hey to Lolita's Jam. Friday, Part 2, DWD, Progressive Rock Bands. who we'll do the rest of the 80s and the 70s and one more cover bands. Uh, one more cover war is set. Um, and then I'll quickly do Hollywood Review. And then, of course, our favorite, and I wish Michelle was here, Freaks in the Basement. See, I can't do that. Uh, <laughs> with our biggest freak, Chris Stevens. So join us Friday night. Saturday, Ike Diaz is here with the jam, and that's a party all night long, Ike Dog. So uh, <laughs> stop by and give him a hey, okay? Um, 
Just a couple songs to wrap up the night. Shout out to Planned It B.O.B. In case you didn't know, Michelle and I are kind of celebrities now. Oh, Michelle, I got to tell you, I told my daughter about it, and she goes, I'm so proud of my mom. Good job. <laughs> Had to share that with you. So I made my daughter proud that we uh, became famous in a roundabout way. In case you didn't know, our um, Planet B.O.B. Monday night, this past Monday night, was banned. And I believe, what was the last count, Michelle? 22 countries? Yes, R.I.P. the big one. We pulled it tonight. We hope you downloaded it. Um, I did, so I have it. Yeah, my daughter, she goes, I'm so proud of my mom. <laughs> so, <coughs> yay for us. So anyway, what was the last count? 22 countries we were banned uh, for what we don't know. So anyhow, yeah, it's kind of crazy. But uh, kind of infamous now. They're probably listening. Hello. <laughs> Something like that anyway. Uh, but yeah, it was kind of crazy. So join us all this week. Um, next week, don't forget, uh, Fear will be back on Wednesday night. Uh, Tuesday, I'll probably do a uh, pre-show thing where we kind of catch up on the first part of the season. And then, um, you know, discuss the characters that are left. And then, I know, oh, I can't wait. Oh, I love your planning. I like the way you think. Um, so don't forget, and fear, uh, first episode, second half of the season will be Wednesday. Um, either Michelle and I hope or Rick will be um, with me, or both. Let's hope for the first episode I can have both. But um, Michelle will be my co-host every other Wednesday. So join us for that. Uh, shout out to Planet B.O.B. as we rock. Um best uh, preppers and survivalists ever on that page. You have any questions about anything, this is the place to go. It's on Facebook, Planet B period, O period, B period. So you need to check that out. Okay. Shout out to True Horror Junkies, Art of Darkness, um, King Barker Beyond, Horror Three Ring Circus, uh, Survival Wolves. Yes. Okay. Michelle will be with me Wednesday. Woohoo! Glad to hear it. Survival Wolves with uh, Mike Ronan. Conflicted. Those are uh, survival scenarios. Um, with uh, Julie Kinney, whom we've had as a guest on Planet B.O.B. So, cool, cool. Oh, I can't wait. Uh, shout out to KBLP LLC. You need to catch a show, one of our podcasts. That's the place to go. Um, you know, Go to KBLP LLC. Need to get a hold of us? Go there also. So, and shout out to the Walking Dead Freak Show. Um, awesome place. Awesome. So, that wraps it up for tonight. Got a couple songs. Y'all have a good night. Thanks for joining me. And uh, we'll see you Friday night with the part two. See you tomorrow night on Encounters. Peace out, y'all.
is in your soul.